Hello again, everyone. We are now about to do the Rail 7 to Rail 8 in place upgrade using Leap. So let's jump right into it. As we last left off, we did the 610 to 611 satellite upgrade. That went fine. So the first step we need to do is enable the extras repository. So we'll go subscription, manager, repos, enable. Rail-7 server extras RPMs. And as you remember in our first video, when we tried to do this out of order, there were dependency issues. Now that we're on 6.11, I expect it to not be so. All right, so satellite, maintain, packages, install, leap, Make sure spell everything right. Yes, I want to proceed. Yay, this time it works. That's what I want to see. So hit yes. So our next step is going to do the leap pre-upgrade. So we'll just go leap pre-upgrade. And we'll see what that gives us. Now the Red Hat documentation states that the first run is expected to fail, but will report issues that will inhibit the upgrade. So that way you'll You'll, you're more than likely going to have to do some work to resolve um, the issues that are brought up. Once you get them sorted out, then you should be able to do it again. Now, with this being a fairly clean install of RHEL 7, with, RHEL, with Satellite 610 installed and then an upgrade, it's possible it could be just fine. But that's unlikely in a production environment. Your servers are going to be, have been around for a while and have numerous updates and packages installed and changes made to them. So just keep that in mind. So even in this, it says upgrade inhibited. The inhibitor is missing required answers in the answer file, consult the pre-upgrade report for details and possible remediation. So it looks like it puts it, the report is in varlog leap, leap dash report dot text. So let's go, uh, let's just go less. R log leap yeah. report text. Doesn't like my um, processor. Uh, we'll see if we can get around that. I doubt that's going to be an issue for me, at least in my production environment. So we'll have to worry about that at least. I guess we're going to look at the inhibitors, respect or high inhibitor. Missing required answers file. One of the more sections in the answers is missing. Use your choices. All right, so what it wants you to do is it needs to remove PAM PKCS 11 module check. Confirm equals true. And in the documentation, it actually says this is one of the most common things. Um, so let us grab this. Because you're just going to run this command, and then we should be fine. Some of these other ones, it looks like we can just fix after the fact. All right, so first we need to do this. All right, let's do the leap free upgrade one more time. 
make sure that it doesn't give us the upgrade inhibited again. So the second time we did it, um, everything shows green. We are capable of proceeding. So once you are satisfied with the changes you've made, you can continue with leap upgrade. Once this process is completed, we will reboot the system. All right, the leap upgrade is now done. It has a report here that we can look at and it does say a reboot is required. Obviously, because we are switching from route seven to eight. So let us reboot the system. I wanted to see what it was doing on the console side, so because I think it's going to do some things on the console, not so you won't be able to see it yet. Once it finishes here, it will then reboot again. It's rebooting into Rel8 now. It is relabeling SE Linux. We see the command prompt. We can switch over to the terminal. All right, good. Let's switch over to the terminal. It does show it's Rails 8.6, so that looks good. So let's meet you over there. Okay, so let's log into satellite. And we want to verify our post upgrade status. So eight point six looking good. We need to do a now we can use DNF, reinstall Foreman SE Linux, Catello SE Linux, disable plugin equals Foreman Protector. This is the thing that locks packages, so you can actually use the disable plugin equals form and protector and then it'll just install otherwise they'll say nope you can't do it so we're going to reinstall form and se linux and catello se linux say yes just let this finish up it shouldn't take too long then we just need to change one more thing with se linux and that will bring a conclusion to the rail 7 to rail 8 upgrade so almost there so let's do all right we're gonna run this command to see if there's any denials all right let's look in our it's set for Permissive. We're going to change it to enforcing. And we're going to reboot. So get enforce shows enforcing. Okay, now let's try logging on the satellite. We are now at the <coughs> satellite GUI again. Shows that we are 
version 6.11.4.1. So let's log on. So that will bring an end to our upgrade. It's a lengthy procedure and I would highly recommend on each step you do a backup snapshot because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There's other methods you can do. You do not have to do the in-place upgrade. You can clone your system and do a backup of satellite and restore it to the new one. It's each individual is going to have a different scenario that's going to work best for them. So find out the scenario that's going to work best for you and how you wish to proceed. I think for us, we're going to be trying the in-place upgrade. Um, we have a couple different environments that we can use this on. So we're going to be starting with a dev environment, doing the in-place upgrade and seeing how it works and deciding if we are going to move into production based on how well the dev environment goes. So. Always a good idea to try it in a dev environment, um, especially one if you've had one that's been going for a while that's that's had a lot of changes done to it like the production one would have had. So until then, um, the next time we're going to do a video on upgrading satellite from 6.11 to 6.12 and that will bring us to the latest version of satellite currently. So until then, thank you for watching once again and have a great day everybody. Bye.